So, right on. Yeah. So fo geologist <laughs> follow up question: Why pan flute? Oh, the pan flute. <laughs> so some of, some of that was uh, uh, not quite entirely accurate. If you look at some of the description there, it was just kind of playing around. But you know. <laughs> Grew up with Zamfir. You've heard of Zamfir, a master of the pan flute. That's right. Yeah. Live in concert, Zamfir and Yanni. This video is brought to you by Backblaze. We'll hear more about them later. But for now, Let's get on to today's video. Welcome to the new and improved Room 6, all the way from Vancouver, Washington. For over five years, I covered the Las Vegas music scene, and unfortunately, um, life happened, had to move, here I am. But I got something special for you. Uh, actually, I have a band from San Diego that I'm interviewing. So uh, stick around, please you know, consider subscribing, and uh, stay tuned because I have some really cool things coming down the pipe here. But first, we are talking to a three-piece San Diego-based rock band breaking the mold of the usual original rock band. Their sound is a blend of rock, punk, and indie, and is known for being irreverent, non-conforming, and aggressively foot-stomping. Please welcome to the channel, Diva Crush. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hey. Hi. Awesome. Thank you for coming on the channel, and uh, thank you for watching. If you want to be like Diva Crush and be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down below or by clicking the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the ways you can support what I do here, as well as ways you can, you know, help me grow the channel, like the link, the like, the share, and the subscribe button. It all helps, and I thank you. Now then, before anything else, if you don't know who Diva Crush is, thank you for watching. Please tell the viewers who you are and what you do in the band. I'm Pat. I am the vocalist. I'm the front person. I play bass, and I write our original music. Our songs. And, I'm Pete. <laughs> and I play guitar. I'm, I'm the guitarist in the band, band. or a guitarist in the band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm Eric. I'm currently the drummer in the band. Uh, started as a rhythm guitarist and uh, we lost our drummer. And so now we're a, a three piece. Um, so currently a drummer, but also uh, handle a lot of the recordings and production aspects of things. And so I'm a little bit of the, the engineer as well. So we we record all of our stuff and uh, have been producing it all ourselves um, as we're trying to grow and get our name out there. Uh, and Eric, that actually leads me to a great question. Uh, we talked to you already mentioned how kind of also like producer. I, w I had a question for you. Why is it called Anti Klein Studios? <laughs> well, I, I happen to be a geologist and and. Uh, that's just a it's a it's a fold in a rock and I've always liked it and uh, just seemed like the appropriate name. So, right on. Yeah. So fo geologist follow up question. Why pan flute? Oh, the pan flute. <laughs> so some of some of that was uh, uh, not quite entirely accurate. If you look at some of the description there, it was just kind of playing around. But, you know, grew up with Zomfir. You've heard of Zomfir, a master of the pan flute. That's right. <laughs> you gotta give some credit. Hasn't to everyone? The you gotta give some credit to the man. It's, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful instrument. Yeah. I do not know how to play it, but um, but I can mimic the sounds uh, with recording software. Nice. <laughs> so, live in yeah. live in concert, Zamfir and Yanni. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. All right. Um, so. Since I started asking Eric some some personal questions there, I'll go ahead and just continue the trend here. Uh, Pete, if you have to pick one for the rest of your life, piano, guitar, or keyboard? No, I guitar. I had a feeling because you know that's yeah. what you you're, you're back. You're, you do that. I played so. um, in the cover bands I was in. I probably played keyboards for seventy five percent of the tunes we played because there's 20 guitarists for every keyboardist really yeah. out there. So. That's true. That's true. But uh, yeah, like, I, I really enjoyed just staying with the guitar now. Definitely. Um, did you did, did you ever play Soma? No. I lived in San Diego for a year. But I've been there. Oh, go ahead. 
I've been there a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 lived, I lived in San Diego for yeah. eight years, and I always yeah. wanted to play Soma. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's still yeah, live and kicking of, down there. Yep, yeah, there are here. a lot of dive bars. Um, the Casbah. We so would yeah. like Casbah. Yeah. We did brick by brick. Brick by brick. Yes, um, we did play brick by brick. That was fun. And Bancroft. Yeah. Bancroft. Yes, yeah. yes yeah. that is a true dive bar. <laughs> <laughs> in a good in a good way it really is it is it is it was fun. it was fun they actually had a great setup for this for the musicians on stage we yeah. just plug in and away we go it was really nice awesome uh the the best sound system like up until getting to vegas and playing like the house of blues the best sound system i ever performed through was at what is no longer a thing it's the san diego uh, coach house and uh, it opened it opened for a while and I remember walking in with a yeah. tape. You see, kids, <laughs> there used to be these things called audio cassettes. Uh, but I, I walked in with a demo tape from my. I walked in with a demo tape from my first band uh, called Magic Viewing Patch. Shout out MVP. And wow. I just happened to walk in at the right time. They, they they needed they needed an opener. They needed a, a local opener, and I walked in just the right time. I said, "Hey, just wondering if you know got any gigs." not knowing anything about this place other than it's a bar, you know? So the guy took, takes my tape, listens to it, says, have you heard of a band called Iron Butterfly? Oh, and 22 year old me and 18 and 19 year old rest of my band got to pl open for Iron Butterfly. Oh my oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, um, Jealousy is a disease. That was a San Diego oh. band. Yeah, yeah, they were, that's why they, they were like making yep. kind of their, their comeback or whatever. And um, then, unfortunately, as soon as we were done, the rest of the band had to leave because <laughs> they were under twenty one. Oh. But twenty one, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it, yeah. but it was really, it was one of those moments of just like, I'm sorry, what? And the band didn't know who they were. <laughs> Only like their parents were excited, <laughs> but they didn't know who, yeah, they, who they were. Right. <laughs> and uh, I was like, let me play you something, you know. But yeah, that was freaking cool and at that point i was single and I, I didn't have anybody to really like bring myself it would have been really awesome to, yeah. to like my wife oh, my yeah. wife now my wife would have loved it um so <laughs> we, we've considered we've actually considered uh, playing part of inagata de vida <laughs> <laughs> we, we we were such little i'm gonna say punks but i don't mean we played punk music we were just being like you know jerk little jerks yeah. we were such punks, punks about it yeah we would we would war sound check with in the white room by cream and stop halfway oh, through yeah. just so like yeah we could play yeah okay and then we'd get, yeah. get our do our originals it's like screw you yeah. um <laughs> so pat did, yes. did you ever get the horse you wanted did I ever get the horse that I it's wanted? It's on your website. Uh, yeah, I never got the horse that I, well, I can't say that. I, I yeah, no, I didn't get the horse that I wanted. The, the horse that I was training that just about killed me, um, put me on the ground. So, uh, no, I don't play with horses anymore. Be careful what you, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're big and they're, they're beautiful. I love them but they will hurt you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Follow-up question to that, since I kind of threw you a, yep. a, a loop there. Can you compare and contrast, like, briefly, Curve versus Diva Crush? No, no comparison. Curve was the initial foray into an all-female band trying to get a rock band together. Um, Bev was my lead guitarist, very good, very good guitarist. Um, she could play the licks, but trying to get the rest of the band to, you know, pull together us in the direction that I wanted to go was just impossible. So it was more, much more bluesy, light, not, I wouldn't say light rock, but cause I was still pushing for heavy hard rock, but, um, Curve was kind of the training wheels for Diva Crush. Um, by the time I got to Diva Crush, I knew what I was looking for and knew what I needed to hear. So. All right. I was just wondering if it was a whole other dynamic shift, but it sounds like it was more like 
curve was the, the the practice grounds for Diva Crush. The 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 uh, what's the word? Working out the kinks, kind of. It it was in a way it was, and then the first few renditions of Diva Crush were still working out the kinks, <laughs> and then when when Eric and Pete and I got together, it's magic. It is truly magic what we do. I mean, it just it just falls into place. Awesome. So. Well, speaking of magic, nice segue. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna perform a little magic here, and we're going to time travel to uh, hear a quick message from future Josh. See you in a minute. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Making YouTube videos can be a little resource intensive. It seems like hardly a week goes by that I don't have my computer yelling at me about running out of space. Fortunately, I've got Backblaze. Whether you need to free up space on your hard drive or want to be able to retrieve something while on the go, Backblaze offers peace of mind for just $7 a month. They offer unlimited computer backups, which you can have access to anywhere with an internet connection. That's safe and encrypted. You can even restore old versions of files from up to 30 days ago. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get a 15-day free trial. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Backblaze for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider helping me pay for this move that I just did up here by clicking the link down in the description. You'll save some money, I'll make some money, it's a win-win. In the meantime, we're going to get back to this interview here by... Uh, actually asking the first question I normally ask in an interview to uh, all my prey, and you OG Room Sixers know what's coming. Diva Crush. I want to talk about your earliest musical influence, and by that I mean, what is that memory you have of the first time you said, I want to do that? Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze. Yeah. When I heard that, I was 12 years old, and um, just the opening of the song, you know, with the distorted guitar. I, I just, it was something I never heard before. And I was listening to tons of pop music. Uh, 60s pop music was great. You could get the Four Tops and Cream and, I don't know, Beatles, everything yeah. blended in. But when I heard that, I thought, oh, I got to <laughs> do that. <laughs> and then I, as a piano player, as, as a kid, I was a pretty good piano player having uh, five or six years of lessons and then I when I heard Hendrix it was guitar you know rock and roll it, it was really a profound thing for me yeah for me um I would say uh well first oh, this stupid thing mamas and papas I know that doesn't sound like a rock band <laughs> beginning um but when I was growing up, I mean, that was playing all over the place. Their, their harmonies were awesome, and it was just great music. And then came CCR and, you know, Cream. Uh, and I thought, oh, wow. I, you know, I started out playing classical guitar. Um, my parents, because I said I wanted to play, I wanted a guitar. So my parents decided that I should play classical guitar. <laughs> and... Um, so I started playing classical guitar, but then I discovered rock music, and that was the end of that. What about you, Eric? Well, mine, mine's going to sound a lot different than this. Um, when I was in high school, I grew up back on the East Coast in South Carolina, and I saw a punk band play called Dirty Rotten Imbeciles, DRI, in a barn in South Carolina. Oh they come to God. Vegas a lot. To, to date, really? to date, that's the best concert I have ever been to. Oh my gosh! It was <laughs> absolutely amazing. It was so loud that I don't even think I could hear what anybody was doing. It was a wall of sound, and I mean, it reminds me of going to see Motorhead. Like seeing Motorhead was was huge too. But uh, watched uh, DRI at that barn, um, and then I, I got into Bad Brains. I got into Black Flag, and and, and just the normal. <laughs> Bad brains. <laughs> oh yeah, um, wow. and uh, that we we immediately started a band. Like 
that was it. I was in high school with some friends and we saw that show with DRI. And the week later, uh, somebody bought a guitar. Um, I was actually lead singer in, in that, that band. And it was just full on punk, full on punk all the way through high school. And, cool. and really, really that's what did it. Right on. And mm -hmm. I, honestly, you'd be surprised the uh, when I, I asked that question because I'll be interviewing like death metal bands with the makeup and everything. And they're saying, oh, yeah, I grew up listening to blues or I grew up listening to, you know, right. uh, J Jimmy Buffett or something. You know, you're just like, <laughs> yeah, OK, right. walk me through that path. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Yes. Well, we have a couple more que uh, questions here and then we're going to hear that uh, that song with the uh, the slideshow from Diva Crush. So stick around for that. Um, from there, how long has this particular trio been performing as Diva Crush? Uh, three years now. Okay, so it's fair to say you've got some belts under your or some shows under your belt. Um, we have belts under our shows. Yes, yes, belt, yes thank you. Yes. <laughs> Him good the English speak. I'm a professional. Um, no, <laughs> hey, we are all college educated. Yes, <laughs> so I'm totally tober. So. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on a t-shirt. It's a great group. I saw that on a t-shirt of some sorority girl who was celebrating her 21st birthday. I thought, that's, a, that's a great <laughs> shirt. Oh, um, yep. So I wanted to ask, what is your, f I'm going to say favorite, but what I really mean is what is your most memorable show moment performing as Diva Crush? And it could be where things went way off the rails or you checked off a bunch of rock star mm. wish list things or somebody went to jail, you know, something like that. What do you got that's your, this one time story? For me, it was when we were playing brick by brick and I was wearing all leather and the leather pants were so tight that I <laughs> couldn't bend over to set up my pedal board and Pete had to <laughs> help me. I couldn't get the, um, the batter of the, the little uh, transmitter pack for my, uh, uh, I, I wasn't wearing in-ears that night, but um, whatever I had on, I couldn't, I couldn't even get it on, onto my, the pocket on my pants. They were so tight. So for me, that, that was it. <laughs> Guys. Um, yeah, I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, all okay. right. All right. Well, um, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Pete. You go ahead. No, my, I really, we played at the Bancroft bar um what a month ago or so and i think yeah that's, that's the best we sounded yes. we were on a bill with like um four other bands they were from the one was from philly and um one was from the uh i forgot where they're they were from but anyways they were, they were from other parts of the country and stuff and we sounded really good that night you know, it was a small crowd, but we were cooking and I just felt totally yeah. felt like now that's where we wanted to be, you know, to that level because we worked so hard to to get there and stuff. But it was it was a great, great show for it's us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a good performance for us. It was. Yeah. 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 They've they've been relatively small shows that we've yeah. been playing, uh, as we're just trying to get our name out there. But there's one one in particular. I don't even know if you guys saw this. Pat and Pete were playing Navajo, and there's a gentleman there who who comes. Oh he's always With there. Us. He's in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but when we get out there and we start playing, like he's pushing people out of the way to get up <laughs> next to the stage. And I've even seen him like stand up. He like pushes up on oh, his wow. wheelchair, and stands up, and starts like headbanging. <laughs> That that is the coolest thing, um, and uh, I don't know. We, we just that that one in particular just it stands out at me. And every time we play there, I like look for him, and he's almost always there. Like every time that, that we yeah. that we've done that. Game. Yeah, he is. So, he's almost always there. And uh, the guy in the flip flops. Um, there's some yeah, there's exactly. a number of disabled. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a number of disabled that, that hang ah. out there, um, and it is it's really gratifying to see that people do like our music and they want to hear more. In fact, oh, I know, yeah. I know. Aside from the leather pants debacle, um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we got asked for an encore. Uh, we were playing Diva, uh, we were playing um, Navajo. And we, you know, we that's something that is unusual. Uh, 
but they said, oh, let's have encore, more and more. And we're like, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> we weren't quite prepared, but uh, that was a real defining. It was like gasoline or something. We did something really heavy. I remember when they asked for that encore. And it's more of a bluesy kind of club. And we played something really, really hardcore. I thought it was gasoline, wasn't it? I think it was. But anyway, you know, to, to, go, from, to go from folks that are just kind of dancing to the music to like having a little pit for them. And that, <laughs> the guy in the in the wheelchair, like spinning around in the pit, that's yeah. yeah, really cool, really cool. So yeah. anyway. that's awesome. That is great. Making the the lame walk and the blind to see. <laughs> there we go. That's right. Team of Crush will definitely do it. We blow people out of their chairs. It is. It's a religious experience. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. right on. <laughs> well, hey, good news. Last question. You made it. Yay. So. Yay. <laughs> Stick around. We're going to be seeing that uh, little slideshow from David Crush here. But first, this is another question I ask of all my prey. And I, I usually always uh, end an interview with this because I really like the answers I get. Let's talk. <clears throat> We're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence and talk to little you, the one that said, I want to do that. Okay. You can jump in a time machine. You can go back and talk to them. And I'm not going to say what, what would you warn them about? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, what's one thing you wish someone had told you, hey, you're going to need to know this, and don't say change your strings? <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. well, uh, it's hard work, and it's sometimes low payoff. You have to enjoy what you're doing. you got to believe in what you're doing and keep doing it. I never, I, this is the first band that I've played in that's all originals. And I'm, I'm never going back, you know, to the cover bands because that's kind of, you know, it's it's good. You'll play a lot, yeah. but doing what we do, create our own music and stuff is just awesome. You know, and I, I owe all that to Pat. She's a great songwriter. Well, thanks, Unbelievable. Thank yep. Well, like ACDC mm -hmm. said, it's a, it's a long, what was it? It's a hard... It's long way to the yeah, top. Yeah, long way to the top. Uh, I, I can't want to say hard way to the top. It's a hard way to the top. <laughs> it is a hard way to the top, yeah. too. So I guess I would say if you're in a cover band, you're going to play more. But if you're in yes. an original band, you're going to like your music that you created more. It's worth yeah. It's worth the, um, the you know, what you're doing. Just to, uh, it's, it's, it's I, I have to agree. I'm, there's I'm, effort. I'm sorry to cut off the other two here. Uh, I just have to jump in and say I... As someone who's reviewed many a local musician, I have to agree when a certain when a song or an artist resonates with me, the feeling I get knowing I know that person. They've hugged me. Like I, they've, they've been in my kitchen, you know, possibly drunk. Uh, but like the, the feeling I get listening to somebody knowing like I remember when you sounded like this and and I know what you sound like now. And and, the, the, yeah. and I've I've seen like you grow. I love that. I, I'm a lot of people's first interview. A lot of young songwriters, their first interview. And so to watch them grow and suddenly see their name on flyer after flyer after flyer and, and you know, playing these shows yeah. that I would love to play, that I'm just like, I'm so happy that I, I'm so proud that I, I got to be part of that, but also that I helped get you that one, that get, 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 help you uh, uh, that one hurdle of, oh, now I got to do an interview and talk about myself, which for a lot of songwriters <laughs> is hard to do. So anyway, but that I, I digress. Uh, Pat, Eric, either one of you. Eric. Um, all right, I'll go. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking a little me. I'm gonna have to go. Learn your damn rudiments. Learn your rudiments. <laughs> Right-handed and left-handed. Flip them. Do them with your feet too. And for <laughs> the love of God, play with a metronome. Yes. <laughs> I might get some flack on this as you said as you send this out. It might get some flack on this, but I'm telling you, play with a metronome. Like and, no, and I, no I one will that. flack you. I there are <laughs> I've had again like death metal, like really technical metal bands, and they're like, oh, we use metronome. We use a click track on on stage. All of us. Click track. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I like with the, the hair, you don't even see it. So I'm just like, really? Yeah. It's like <laughs> they don't just practice with it, but they perform with it. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, what is it? You can't, you can't play the tempo if you don't practice the tempo. Right. 
And I've, yeah. I mean, I've met, I've played a lot of bands and met a lot of drummers, met a lot of guitar players that had never played with a metronome. And it is so hard to get the band together and to get the band tight. Yeah. Now I, I'm, I'm all for maybe playing live and not using one or when we play, I'm, I'm the only one that has it. Um, so yeah. I might be playing to a click, but Pat's playing to me and then Pete's doing yeah. Pete's. Stuff. So it's, it's all good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. As long as I can hear both Pete and Eric, I can, you know, I know where I'm at, but sometimes it's a, it's a challenge with the, uh, the technical stuff, you know, your in-ears aren't functioning properly or the, the venue isn't set up for this or the engineer the, that night at the venue isn't, you know, they're just not a hundred percent, whatever. Um, as far as little me, I would t tell her, I'd sit her down and say, look, I know you like the idea of being a lead player, but you're a bass player. You're just not a lead player. You never will be a lead player. You have other things that you can do. You're going to write phenomenal songs and you're going to keep churning them out. And, you know, yes, you can play guitar, but at heart, you're a bass player. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Wise but, words. Yeah, I, I, perseverance. Oh, yeah, perseverance, of course. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't say it any better. All pearls of wisdom. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for being on the channel, guys. Um, stick around. We're going to see that slideshow and uh, hear a track from Diva Crush and we'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, we'll temporarily say goodbye and see you in a minute. She ain't about to give me the time of day. If I call her up, she won't have much to say. Thank Diva Crush for coming on the channel. It's a great interview and an awesome soundtrack. No, three, two, one. I want to thank Diva Crush for coming on the channel. It was a great interview. I hope you enjoyed that track with the slideshow. In the meantime, if you want to know more about them, hit up those social media links down below. Also, in the meantime, if you want to know, you know, see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, click over there and don't forget to ring the bell. 
And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -bum. <laughs>